Based on now that we have a head-to-head -head comparison between uh, uh, immunotherapy and chemotherapy, the, we have seen striking differences in terms of uh, tolerability of uh, immunotherapy versus chemotherapy. The toxicity profile is completely different. With chemotherapy, we see nausea, vomiting, alopecia, and so on. With immunotherapy, obviously, we see some other side effects. These side effects uh, are usually related to the mechanism of action of these agents, that is, to increase our immune system. And what we see sometimes is like a autoimmunity phenomena, because these compounds are making like uh, uh, generating like uh, the lymphocytes attacking the skin or the or the the the, the, the bowel. We we see um, pruritus, we see colitis, we see pneumonitis, but uh, those are seen in limited number of patients. And we know that we can shut down these side effects using steroids. So if uh, if we, we see one of these side effects, immediately we stop therapy, we give high dose steroids, and usually we don't see any life threatening uh, side effects. So. Um, Having said that, so that in general, the toxicity profile is good. Uh, it's better for the patients. The quality of life is superior to chemotherapy. And obviously, patients are coming as to, to give me, please, chemotherapy. I don't want to have my blood removed. We need to get more data in order to uh, uh, start using these compounds earlier and earlier. Uh, but nowadays, at least for second-line blood cancer patients, this is a new standard of care. It's, as mentioned, there are two compounds approved in the US, atezolizumab and nivolumab. Probably pembrolizumab is going to be approved pretty soon. And uh, hopefully in Europe, we're going to also to have all these compounds approved pretty soon.